Hey everyone, Leon here, and today I really want to go over the difference between a job and a career, and even give you a little bonus in the end. But before that, I want to put you into a scenario. Let's say you just graduated school, or you're at a turning point in your life, and you're looking for work. And at that point, you're presented with two opportunities for you to choose, two work opportunities. Um, these two work opportunities are in the same field. It's not a field that you're particularly interested in, like you don't see yourself doing that for the rest of your life. You probably don't even like it that, you don't hate it, but you probably don't even like it that much. And obviously, let's pretend that you have to pick a job, right? You can't be like, I'm not gonna work, because why, like everyone's getting a job, um, and you need the income to sustain your lifestyle for whatever purpose, you have to pick. So let's dive in. The first opportunity um, is a $45,000 a year job, Canadian dollars, um, and you work nine to five, right? Nine to five, and you only work nine to five. So that means you're not doing overtime. You're not doing any extra work. You don't bring work home. It's not that stressful. You can leave work at work. Uh, the only thing is you might get a promotion, um, but it's definitely not something you would want to do for like five to 10 years. Second opportunity is a $55,000 a year job. That's actually quite a bit above the average salary of a university graduate, which is about $50,000 in 2018. Uh, but for this job, it's not nine to five. It's more like on most days, eight to seven. All right, you're working 11, 12 hour days most of the time. Sometimes you might have to work 13, 14 hours. Um, there's no overtime pay because it's salary um, and you're going to have to bring work home. You're going to be thinking about it a lot of times. You're going to have to meet deadlines. It's more stressful. Right? You're going to have to bring work home on the weekends. In order to do a good job in this job, you might have to sacrifice family time. You might have to sacrifice leisure. Now, one thing about this job is that it's a big company and if you do a good job, provided that you continue to work hard, you will get promoted, you will get raises and even five, 10 years in, there's still room to get promoted. There's still room to go up in the corporate ladder. So at this point in time, which one would you choose? Now, obviously what you choose depends on your situation. Leave a comment below, I want to know. But the first opportunity is the definition of a job. You work nine to five and you do the work and you get paid and you go home and that's it. Let me tell you something about a job. You don't have to like the job. It just has to pay you. It just has to pay the bills. A job just has to put food on the table, right? You do the work, they pay. That's a job. You don't have to like it, you just have to do it. Now you still have to do a good job, but at the end of the day, it's just a contract. Now, if you hate your job so much that it's affecting your daily life and how you live, then you should probably get an other job. The second opportunity is a career. Now, the defining characteristic of a career isn't the fact that it pays more, some careers pay less. Actually, the defining characteristic of a career is that it requires more sacrifice. You have to put more work in. And at times you might have to sacrifice family time. You might have to sacrifice leisure time. And so if that's the case, then you better have picked a career that you don't hate. Rather, you better have picked a career that you're actually somewhat passionate about, that you kind of enjoy. Wouldn't that be a good idea? Now a career sounds more fulfilling because it takes work to get better. But a problem comes along when people decide to get into careers when they really should have taken a job. If they do that, then all of a sudden they're working overtime. They're working really, really hard for something they don't like. They're in a really not happy place. It's actually okay to take a little less pay and just get a job. And on the side, on the extra time that you have, figure out what you want to make a career out of. And you know what? 
not everybody ends up having a career, and, and that's okay. Some people just have a job their whole lives, and they're still happy because your job is not your life. Now, there's actually a third word that I want to talk to you about. It's the most important word. Ready for the bonus? It's the word vocation. And a vocation is actually a sacred word that has Latin roots meaning to call. Now, if you have a vocation, it means the universe has called you to do something you believe you were meant to do. And a vocation could be writing, a vocation could be acting, a vocation could be singing, a vocation could be being entrepreneurial. But whatever it is, it's something you know deep on the inside that you're supposed to do, that you're supposed to dedicate your life to do no matter what. And some people, if they work hard, they can make a career out of their vocation. Now, it's important to remember that a vocation just doesn't magically appear in front of you. I mean, it does for some people, and for them, they're unicorns, right? Like, they're lucky. But it doesn't happen to most people. Now, the difference between a career and a vocation is that nobody can take your vocation away from you, right? People can take your career away from you. People can take your job away from you. The economy can crash and you might not be getting paid as a business person anymore. You might not get, be getting paid as an actor, singer anymore, but nobody can stop you from singing. Nobody can stop you from acting. Nobody can stop you from being entrepreneurial. That's the difference between a vocation and a career. It's that a vocation is something you do whether or not people care. If a thousand people are watching, you're gonna do it. If nobody cares, you're still gonna do it. That's what a vocation is. So what happens when you do lose your career? Like let's say you found your vocation and you made it into a career and you're, you're loving it, you're passionate about it, but all of a sudden due to external circumstances, you lose the career. What do you do? You go get a job. Remember, you don't have to like the job. And then on the side, you work on turning your vocation back into a career because nobody can take your vocation away from you. Now, it's important to note that a vocation is not a hobby by any means. A hobby is just something you do on the side, privately or publicly, that you find pleasure in, that you, that you enjoy. Um, that has absolutely no stakes, right? It doesn't matter if you're good or bad at it. You're not gonna give anything up. There's nothing at risk. But a vocation, a vocation is something that you've decided to constantly get better at, constantly improve your impact with, and constantly get more attention on. A vocation at its core is something that you're willing to sacrifice for to make it into your career because Fundamentally, you doing your vocation is a picture of you becoming the person in your dreams, the best person that you can be. So to end this video off, I've got three questions I want to ask you to, to help you think your way through what happened in the last few minutes in the video. You ready? Question number one, who is it? that you want to be like who is that person that you want to be in your dreams right like if you could have this personality if you can have this characteristic if you can develop this skill who would you be that's question number one question number two what's your vocation have you found your vocation do you have something you're really passionate about really want to turn into your career and if not how are you going to find it right what are you going to do to find it. Maybe I'll cover this in another video. And finally, question number three. What is the impact that you want to leave in this world? What do you want to give um, in this world? And so make sure you subscribe to this channel because in a future video, we might just cover some strategies that I've discovered, that I've researched on how to help you uncover your vocation. Thank you for watching and hope to see you next time.